Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay jewelry video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today I'm going to show you how you can use purchased bezels, polymer clay, and a few other special ingredients to make this gorgeous bracelet with these beautiful sparkling stones in the settings that you've created yourself. There are several steps, but it's not complicated at all. So this project began when, on a trip to my local Michaels, I picked up this string of bezels. <laughs> That's my rooster. He's just, he's three months old. He's practicing his crowing. <laughs> um, I picked up these bezels not because I love the sparkly crystals that were in them. Uh, you can see I've actually popped these out, but because I really like the bezels. And although these were sparkly, yes, I thought we can definitely do better than that. So you just need to take a tool, uh, an awl or something. I wouldn't recommend an X-Acto knife as it tends to break off, but some kind of strong tool and then pop out these crystals. And two of mine came out really easy and the other three came out in chunks, but they'll all come out. And now we can make really wonderful, beautiful gemstone-like pieces to go in here that are completely and uniquely our own. So we're going to start first with some polymer clay and you really don't need much. Here I have pearl clay. You could use any color you want. Uh, just keep in mind that the color is going to come through and change the color of your inks. So I like the pearl because it gives a little sparkle but it doesn't tone down my colors very much. The next thing you'll need is some metal leaf and this is simple leaf which is really a lot simpler to deal with as advertised than some of the others. I have gold, you could use silver or copper or whatever you want and I'm just going to lay this on my polymer clay and then burnish it in really well so that it sticks to the clay. Just kind of try to use my fingernail and cut it off along the edges so I don't waste much there. And don't worry too much about those ex that extra on the edges. We will use some of it in the project. Next, you want to send this through your pasta machine. And I forgot to mention my beginning sheet was rolled out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. So I'm going to send this through the pasta machine one setting thinner. So number one is my thickest, so I'm going to send it through on a two. Now I've just sent this through the pasta machine on one setting thinner than the sheet was originally rolled out. And you can see the direction that I rolled it. You can tell by the lines on it and also the major cracks are going this way. So now what I want to do is step the machine down one more setting, so to a three, and give my sheet a 90 degree turn and send it through again. And now you can see that the cracks in the gold leaf are fairly even. None are going more in one direction than the other and that's why we do the two turns, stepping it down each time. And now what I have here is a selection of alcohol inks. These are Ranger, but Pinata also makes a brand. And I've just chosen some colors that I like. And I like to choose analogous colors, those that are close to each other on the color wheel. That way, when they inevitably mix, they're not going to turn into some muddy color. So I'm starting here with one of my favorite alcohol ink colors, Sailboat Blue. And I'm just going to add a few drops and then kind of tilt it, let them spread a bit, and then this is, well that was stream and this is sailboat blue. Depends on my mood which of these I like better. This is a much brighter, hence the name, sailboat blue. Now I'm not going to rub these around to spread them because I've found what happens when I do that is that I often lift up little bits of my gold leaf, which I don't want to do. So now I'm going to add a couple of greens. This is lettuce and this is meadow. This would be gorgeous in autumn shades of reds and oranges. Whatever suits you. So I'm going to make a mess of my finger here and just kind of dab these around a little because they're not spreading out as much as I hoped. And it seems to be all turning green, so I'm going to add some more blue. And what this will do, it will push. See how it's spreading? It will push the other colors aside as you add it. So you get these great variations. 
And you'll end up with those dark lines too, and that's okay. It'll add a lot of interest. And now, what you have to do is walk away. Go wash your finger. Uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol or the alcohol blending solution that you use with alcohol inks will take it off. Walk away and let this sit for a while. You want it to be completely dry for the next step. So here's my alcohol inked sheet all nice and dry and I also now have a little bit of Pardo translucent clay. I have rolled this out on the thinnest setting of my pasta machine and I'm going to take a nice clean and dry acrylic roller and just lightly maybe roll it a little bit thinner on the tile. Don't press too hard or it will stick and then it rips and it's just a pain. Ask me how I know. So we're just going to do this. Now because this is so thin I don't really want to lift it up so I'm not going to. Now notice I don't have enough to cover this whole sheet. I don't want to cover this whole sheet. I'm actually going to use some of this for another purpose. So I'm just going to use my blade, lift up this sheet, and then place it upside down on translucent. And just give that a bit of a gentle roll. Now, of course, if you were making a bigger project, you might need to use a larger amount of clay, but I'm just filling these five rather small bezels. So then we'll flip that over. And now it's from this that we will cut our ovals to fill our little metal bezels. So there are a couple different ways that you can cut your shapes to fit inside your bezels, uh, depending on what kind of shape you have. You can just press the bezel onto the clay, and then that will make a mark, and you can use a craft knife to cut it out. Alternately, if you have cutters that match the shape, you can just use those. I have this set of Kemper cutters. They're oval-shaped. And I actually was fortunate in that they're pretty close. This one is almost the exact same size. It's the same height. It's just a little wider than I need. So what I can do is just go ahead and cut that out. And then because it's a little wide, I'm just going to cut a little crescent off of it. And you want your pieces to be a little small rather than large for your bezels. So there's that. Now my bezels have a bit of a dip in the bottom. I don't, perhaps you can see that. They're kind of concave rather than flat. So what I'm going to do is take this little bit that I cut off and fill in that space. So you may or may not need to do this depending on the shape of your bezels just because I want them fairly flat in the bezel. So once, now that that's filled in, I can take this. And now I want to add a bit more dimension. So we've got the gold leaf and the ink under the translucent. And there's even a little bit of leaf and smears of ink on top of the translucent from when I slid it off the tile, which is great. But I want a little bit more. So what I have here is a scrap of cardstock. I just dug it out of my trash. And I'm going to press on this clay over here. One of the things that happened when I was doing this before without the translucent on top was the little bits of gold kept coming off on me as I tried to press these into the the bezels. Now, now of course now it doesn't appear that any of the gold bits are coming off but what I can do is use this to press this into the bezel and you want it just a smidge lower than the level of the bezel. So if you're not getting any gold bits, these little extra gold pieces that are on the edge, I'm just using my fingernail, kind of cutting off little tiny pieces. And you want them pretty much random. Random but organized the way you want, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take this piece of paper that way I won't be leaving fingerprints and burnish in that clay right into the bezel. Peel it off gently and there you go. Now that's ready to go into the oven. The one thing I liked better about doing it without the translucent clay was that I could see the section and choose a section that I liked, but that's okay, it works out well. 
Speaking of liking, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share and subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more. I upload new tutorials every Tuesday and Friday. It's a lot of fun making them for you guys and I hope you enjoy them. So I'm just kind of filling that one in and then I'll do the same on this little one. And by the way, if you've benefited from these videos, consider becoming a patron. You can support this channel with a dollar a month or whatever you can afford uh, because, you know, I use supplies. I buy tools and materials to show you. So it's nice if, uh, if you want to help out, see my Patreon page for details. In testing and playing with this, I, f I did one of these bezels with the clay. It was actually a little bit above the level of the bezel and that made it tricky later on when I was adding the resin dome. So try not to have it above the level of the bezel. The level of the bezel. The level of the bezel. <laughs> so once these are all ready, you can put them in the oven at the manufacturer's recommended temperature. I put mine in for half an hour to make sure they were fully cured. So here are the pieces, uh, fresh out of the oven. And once they came out of the oven, I put them into some ice water. That helps clarify your clear clay. The next thing you'll want to do is find some kind of a blunt tool. Nothing too sharp. I wouldn't recommend using an awl because it could damage your pieces. But some kind of tool to go in and just go into the edge and gently lever out your clay pieces. Just do them one at a time so that you don't mix up the pieces and then just go ahead and add a drop of super glue and glue all your pieces back into the bezels. So now that your pieces are out of the oven and glued into the bezel if you want, you can hold off on that step. Now it's time to add the resin dome. And here I've added it to a couple of the other pieces. Uh, a couple of reasons why I didn't show you these. One of these pieces, the clay actually came up over the edge of the bezel and the resin wanted to run off really quickly. So what I ended up doing was I actually put it on the tile, stood by my back door, added the drops of the resin, and then went right outside into the sun so it would start curing before it had a chance to drip off. So I couldn't show you that very easily. This is Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss. I use it so much I bought a big bottle. Although here's a tip for you, if you do buy the big bottle, uh, save or get a small bottle as well. I foolishly threw away my small bottle and you really have a lot more precision and accuracy with the nozzle in that bottle. So I need to pick up another one, but you can do this. So. As you're applying the resin to your piece, you will notice that it has a very strong surface tension. Here's one drop, and I don't know if you can see that it's quite domed. You really don't want to add too much. I found these smaller ones, about three or four drops is plenty. Now if you do put too much on or for whatever reason it starts to spill over the edge, don't panic. All you need to do is use a paper towel, wipe it up, use a baby wipe, clean the whole thing well, and then start over. See like mine's spilling over here. So I'd probably put a little too much on. So I'm going to clean that up, put it on again and then I'll put these out in the sun or if you have an, a UV light that's great. And here are a few of my pieces with the resin all cured. You can see it makes this beautiful glassy dome that really shows off the layers of depth that you've created with your clay and your translucents and inks and foils. It's quite beautiful. Now here are a few that I made earlier and you can see that I did just one layer here. I didn't do the translucent and the second layer. And so you can see more clearly the original crackled gold leaf. It's just a different look. The reason I abandoned this way of doing it was like I said, the gold leaf kept pulling off the more I manipulated it. It just kept coming off in chunks and wasn't as attractive. Now one thing I forgot to mention earlier was that sometimes when you buy these metal looking pieces at the craft store, sometimes they are acrylic. So you'll want to be sure to test them. 
I just took one of these after I had popped out the rhinestone that came in them. I just threw it in the oven when I was baking some other clay and made sure that it was not going to melt. And then you can see here, I'm waiting for my other two that I just did to cure, but I just wire wrapped on some Swarovski crystals, and then I will add a clasp, and my bracelet will be done. You can see a picture of the finished project at the very end of the video. So if you're interested in the supplies I use, there's a link in the upper right and the description box to go to my blog post. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my Patreon page to help support these videos. Here's another look at the project we made. Thanks for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.